what is said in the dressing room, stays in the dressing room has been a managerial mantra for many years, but it is another footballing convention that Jose Mourinho has readily tossed out the window. His players know that they are just as likely to receive the hairdryer via the media as they are within the bowels of old Trafford, and the public criticism is even more stinging when broadcast to the whole world. It is an unconventional tactic, scorned by many former players and managers, and it risks alienating his men. But it has been increasingly used by Mourinho since his return to England with Chelsea in 2013. Here are the occasions on which he has castigated players in public this season alone. Our attitude was so poor what happened? Newly promoted Huddersfield beat United for the first time in 65 years to end Mourinho's unbeaten start to the season. Aaron Mui punished Juan Mata for giving the ball away in midfield for the first goal and Victor Lindelof misjudged a goal kick to allow Laurenti Pointer to score the second. Who were his main targets? Victor Lindelof and Juan Mata were name-checked for individual mistakes but Mourinho insisted his ire was directed at the entire team. He was also exasperated with Ander Herrera for comments the midfielder made after the match. What did he say? You and the media like to individualize the defeat. I think that is very unfair. The mistakes, Lindelof for the second goal and Juan Mata for the first, belong in the context. If you play an amazing game and lose to an individual mistake, yes, you point the finger. That is not the case here. In the first half I was waiting for the mistake. They came from Mata and from Victor. It could have come from anyone because the attitude was really poor. When I lose matches I like to lose because the opponent was better and had more quality. When you lose because of your attitude, it is really bad. I heard Andre Herrera say in the interview area that our attitude and desire were poor. Oh my god, when a player says that I think they should all go to the press conference because I cannot explain that. They, Huddersfield, played like I like. They played with everything they have, aggression, desire, motivation and sacrifice. We did not. The team that deserved to win won. Simple. I don't even remember a friendly match in which our attitude was so poor. What happened next? United bounced back with wins over Swansea in the Carabao Cup, Tottenham in the league and Benfica in Europe and appeared to have steadied the ship, but were then sunk at Chelsea. Childish players and joke misses what happened? United conceded an equaliser to 10-man Leicester in fourth minute of injury time on December 23 as Harry Maguire punished Mourinho's men, and particularly Anthony Marshall and Jesse Lingard, for bad misses. Who were his main targets? He did not name them, but fingers were clearly pointed at Lingard and Marshall for their wasteful finishing. Chris Smalling, who was struggling with an injury, was beaten by Maguire for the late goal, and Mourinho blamed the team for not covering him. What did he say? We didn't win because missed incredible chances. I would say joke chances. We made a big defensive accumulation of mistakes in an easy match to win. I talked to the players at halftime when it was 1-1 to that it was an easy match to win. Some players they have childish decisions and time helps them to have maturity and to decide better but some other players stay with childish decisions until the end of their career. It depends on what is inside and the way they learn or they don't learn. For example Scott McTominay didn't play today and has still a lot to learn and he is a kid who last year was still playing with kids. But no childish decisions at all. Some other guys have childish decisions for many, many years. We were punished by our mistakes. It was an easy match to win, we did everything to win but when you lose big chances. Childish loss of possession, so easy. Childish in their box and childish in our box. On Smalling, I had the chance to speak with Ashley Young and to tell him the way the team had to be in position because of Smalling's difficulty but there was a lack of maturity. I cannot stop the game and give a team talk. For the last two minutes the players had to immediately adapt, to read the game which they didn't so we had childish decisions in front of goal and bad decisions as it was not just about the goals we missed, poor dribbling or hitting the post. What happened next? The two dropped points were compounded by further disappointing draws against Burnley and Southampton, both at Old Trafford, and the title race was all but over before the turn of the new year. Touchline row with Pogba what happened? Maureen Yu and Paul Pogba had a heated row on the Wembley touchline as United were outfought and outclassed by Tottenham in a 2-0 defeat on January 31st. Pogba was substituted after the argument, with just over an hour gone and the game in the balance. Who were his main targets? There was only one man in sight, Pogba. What did he say? While it remains unclear what was said between the two on the pitch, Maureen Yu did not hold back and his furious body language spoke volumes. The manager had this to say after the match, and actually refused to criticize the player, in the first half, with some injury, he, Pogba, came to me and came with a couple of questions I answered. In the second half I decided to make a change and bring, Marwan, Fellaini with different qualities than him, 
to try to be stronger in midfield with Fellaini and Matic because I wanted Alexis to play as a second striker with Lukaku. It was just a tactical decision but I lost Fellaini too after a few minutes. He, Pogba, is a young player, below 25, of course he has some things to improve. But it is not Paul, it is every player. Every player has a chance to improve until the end of his career, especially the ones below 26, 27. They always have areas to improve. What happened next? It did not take long before the Pogba row took another twist. Pogba not performing what happened? After substituting Paul Pogba in the 1-0 defeat by Newcastle in February, the second time he had removed the £89 million midfielder in three games, there was widespread talk of a rift between player and manager. Graham Souness was particularly scathing of Pogba, so Mourinho hit back, but still had some choice words for his misfiring star who was beaten in the air from a set piece in the build-up to Matt Ritchie's winning goal. Who were his main targets? Pogba, although he was not named, plus other unnamed United players. What did he say? On the team and Pogba's defending, it is not even a free kick in a dangerous position, it is really far from our goal and the players were in position. But we missed the challenge in the air, there were two of my players stood on the floor when, Florian, Lejeune jumped in the air. On Pogba, in this moment he is not playing well. And the team needs him at a good level. When he is not playing at a good level the team is not as good as the team can be. I think it happens with every team when the best players, the most crucial players, for some reason are not performing. What happened next? Mourinho is still struggling to extract anything like Pogba's best form, and is even selecting 21-year-old academy graduate Scott McTominay in his place. A lack of class, lack of personality, lack of desire what happened? United labored to victory over Brighton in the FA Cup on Saturday, the day after Mourinho's extraordinary press conference that saw him go on a 12-minute rant in defense of his managerial style. That was in response to the dismal Champions League exit at the hands of Sevilla. Who were his main targets? The team as a whole, barring Nemanja Matic, who was hailed as outstanding. Luke Shaw, not for the first time in his relationship with Mourinho, was singled out for personal criticism and there was a backhanded compliment to Antonio Valencia too. What did he say? On his scare team, I wanted more personality in the team because many, many times I felt that Matic was an island of personality, desire and control surrounded by lack of personality, lack of class and lack of desire. I have to say that for example, Scott, McDomill lost more passes today in all the matches he played put together but he was a Manchester United player. And for me a Manchester United player is one who when he plays badly still gives to the team. That is a question of personality, that is a Manchester United player for me. And that is what some of the others did not have. He added, a few other guys I saw them scared to play. Please, mister, take me from the pitch. I felt that. On Shaw, Luke in the first half every time they come in his corridor, the cross was coming and a dangerous situation was coming so I was not happy with his performance. I had to change one full back and I chose Luke because at least Antonio Valencia defensively was capable of some good positionings. What happened next? That remains to be seen.